All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today we're continuing measurement, data display, and interpretation with C4, measure temporal dimensions of behavior. When we talk about temporal dimensions, we're looking at things like temporal extent and temporal locus, or more simplified, time. We're measuring continuous time. That includes duration, latency, and inter-response time. Now, if we just quickly look at what that is, let's say we have a standard idea of a discriminative stimulus, the first response, the second response. Latency is going to be time in between the SD and response one. And the response time is going to be time in between response one and response two, so on and so forth. Duration is the length of each individual response. And it's really as simple as that. So if you understand that idea, temporal dimensions of behavior, time become quite easy. We'll go through each one individually, try to simplify it, make it easier on your exam, and make you a better ABA practitioner. Please subscribe if you're not already. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. So temporal dimensions are aspects of behavior that are related to time. You're answering the question, how long, how much time, anything that has to do with a continuous measurement of a length of time. So when you're taking the exam, and this is exam specific, if the question is asking how long something occurs, how much time has passed, think temporal dimensions. Think duration, latency, and inter-response time. Now, we've also got our discontinuous measurements, right? Our, our whole interval measurements, our partial intervals, our momentary time samplings. But those aren't necessarily the same because those are discontinuous. They exist in a different area. Here, we're just focused on our temporal dimensions like duration, latency, and inter-response time. So don't get those two confused, right? With the, with the partial intervals and whole intervals, we're looking at this discontinuous interval measurement system. Here, we're focusing on these continuous measurements. And these measurement procedures help us understand behaviors that are continuous, sustained, or have specific timing requirements. So when we're looking to measure time, we want behaviors that are happening for an extended period. If a behavior is happening at a very high frequency, but not at a long pace or a long length of time, then temporal dimensions like this might not be the best idea. As always, your measurement is dictated by the behavior and your goals, right? We're picking our behaviors, we're picking our goals, and then we're, we're forming our measurement systems around what we're trying to accomplish. So temporal dimensions have to do with time. We'll start with duration, which is the easiest, I would say. So again, if we have our SD, response one, response two, duration is just individual response length. How long is this response? How long is this response? That's what we're looking at. Total amount of time from the start to the end of the behavior, or sometimes we'll refer to it as the onset to the offset. And this is how you should write your definitions when you're teaching how to measure those behaviors. What's the onset? What's the offset? Very, very important when using continuous measurement. Remember frequency, what we went over in our last video, we're looking at discrete behaviors with a clear beginning and end. Duration, you really want the same thing, right? W what is going to be the clear beginning? What's going to be the clear end? Measures how long a behavior or single response occurs. When might we use duration? Behaviors that are continuous, sustained, or occur for a different amount of times. So we're looking at a single response that is occurring for an extended period of time. If the behavior is only happening three or four seconds, duration may not be that relevant. If the three or four seconds is consistent because it might not tell you a whole lot. If the behavior always happens for, let's say, 15 seconds, duration might not tell you a whole lot, right? Because with duration, we're trying to figure out, we have all these different responses. What's the, what's the, let's say, average of how long these responses last? If you know they're lasting 15 seconds, well, then it might be time to target something else. Again, we're speaking in generalities. It's going to depend on your client and going to depend on your goals and your needs. The goal 
ultimately is to determine how long a behavior lasts. That's essentially what you're looking at with duration. So lengths of tantrums, amount of time on task, time spent reading. Let's think of something non-behavioral. Let's say how long it takes you to drive from Louisiana to Florida. What's the duration? Okay. Don't overcomplicate these simple ideas. You know what the word duration means. The meaning of duration doesn't change just because it's an ABA exam. Just apply your knowledge of duration to this idea. Okay, moving on. Latency and into response time. A little more tricky, but still not too bad if we have our little chart here. So we have our duration for these responses. Now, where, where does latency go? Well, latency is the time between the presentation of a stimulus, or SD, an instruction, a cue, and the onset of a response. So our latency is going to go here. And this part is important, right? We're looking at the start of a response because we're, we're looking at how long does it take for that response to begin? How long it takes for a behavior to begin after an SD, a prompt, or an opportunity? That's what we want to know. And we can either aim at reducing that time or increasing it, again, depending on our goals. When your goal is to identify how quickly someone starts a behavior. So a lot of times it's used to look at compliance and responsiveness. If you have a learner who is slow to respond or slow to comply, obviously latency might be something pretty important, right? Or if you want to get out of bed quicker, the alarm clock rings, it takes you a minute to get out of bed. I know when it's time for me to get up in the morning, I tend to lay in bed probably too long, right? I could reduce my latency of my alarm clock to me getting up. That would be a good target behavior for me. What about you say sit down and it takes five seconds for the learner to sit? Again, measuring how long it takes for the behavior to begin. Now you'll often see it written like this, right? For the learner to sit as in the full response. But if you're measuring precise latency, it's going to be from the time you say sit down to the time the learner starts that response. That is the precise latency measurement. And then finally into response time. So last little chart, SD, response one, response two, and you should know this by now, right? We have our duration, duration, we have our latency. So where does into response time go? Well, in between our responses. And there you go. Time elapsed between the end of one response and the beginning of the next. Again, those wordings are important. We're looking at the end of one response and beginning of the next. Now, a couple things to remember. Typically, you want responses in the same response class, right? They're serving the same function. Uh, topography helps, but it's not necessary. You don't often measure into response time between behaviors that aren't related to each other, right? So I might measuring time in between taking a bite of food and doing a math problem, unless that's really relevant to the skill or the, the goal, those two things don't necessarily have the same function typically, right? So when you're using inter-response time, you really want those behaviors to be related in some way. But you can use inter-response time to measure the time in between any response if it meets your needs, right? Remember, you're the analyst. You're creating this program to meet the needs of the client. When should you use when you're interested in the pacing of, it, of a behavior or the time between successive actions? So again, we can target increasing into response time if we want that behavior to happen less or decreasing into response time if we want it to happen more rapidly. Often use decrease or increase the spacing between responses. So think of something like fluency, right? Examples the time in between the child taking one bite of food and taking the next bite or the time between one verbal mand and the next. So if we're teaching some verbal operants, and we want the client answering more questions or manding or tacting more frequently, maybe we measure into response time in between verbal operands. Into response time can be very interesting. It can be used in interesting ways. Get creative. And, and as you're studying this, think of what are some experiences you've had where into response time might have been relevant? Because I think it's a really interesting measurement that might not be used quite enough in actual practice. So summary, quick summary table. Again, not too difficult of an idea. We're really trying to focus on this, this idea of when to start the measurement. I think that's the biggest thing. So latency starts from the SD to the beginning of the behavior. 
and the response time starts from the end of one response to the beginning of the next, and duration is onset to offset. So duration is total time behavior occurs, latency time from SD to behavior start, interest time, inter response time, time between consecutive responses. So duration, tantrum lasted seven minutes, that's the full length. Latency, four seconds to start lining up, time in between the SD. Inter response time, 15 seconds between math problems. All right, thanks for watching C4. As always, we're going to continue this series as we go. We're going to try to start getting these videos out a little quicker so you, you, those that are studying can get more value out of them. As always, be sure to subscribe if you aren't already. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com. When you pass your test, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout-out. Work hard, study hard. We'll see you.